Nothing seemed to pretend trouble. Suddenly you wake up in the middle of the night and don't know what's going on. Thunder from the sky, hundreds of times louder than normal thunder. Blinding white sky, the wail of hundreds of car sirens. The sky is ablaze and you can only see blinding flashes on the horizon. Your heart jumps out of your chest. Adrenaline makes your lungs pump air faster and faster. Your unruly hands tremble. Nothing. Soon everything will be clear. You reassure yourself. Everything will be as before. And indeed, soon everything ends. An air shock wave. Hundreds of billions of tons of dust and ash will cover the city and darken the sky for decades. There's not enough food for everyone. If you're lucky to survive, it's unlikely you'll feel reassured by the fact that the planet has once again in its history been rammed by a giant asteroid. This tiny moving dot in the center of the screen is the asteroid Apophis, 1,000 feet in diameter and weighing 27 million tons. It's not much, just 135,000 statues of liberty. Scientists estimate its orbit to be the most dangerous for the Earth. On the 9th of January, 2013, it came within 9 million miles of us which is about one-tenth of the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Well, that time it flew past us, scientists say that when it returns in 2029 and 2036, our planet will also not be in danger. But here's a small surprise. In its last approach, it was suddenly discovered that its mass is 75% greater than previously thought. Think about how much trust we should put into our calculations of its orbit if we can't determine even such physical dimensions of this potential destroyer of humanity. The energy of its potential collision with our planet is estimated by NASA experts to be more than 500 megatons. This is the energy of 25,000 plutonium bombs detonated over Nagasaki in 1945. But at the same time, the 300-meter Apophis is just a small grain of sand compared to the real giants. Here is Chicxulub Crater, a giant dent in the Earth's crust with a diameter of up to 110 miles and an initial depth of up to 12 miles, almost twice as deep as the Mariana Trench. It reminds of the six-mile diameter space block that crashed into Earth 66 million years ago and triggered the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event on our planet. And here, on Wilkes Land, under the ice sheet of Antarctica, lies a crater up to 300 miles across, and this trace in the Earth's crust was left by a space visitor with a diameter of 40 miles. And if giant metal and stone aliens from outer space have periodically visited us in the past, you can be sure that another catastrophe will only be a matter of time. Imagine an unexpected explosion and the formation of a similar crater, for example, in the middle of New York. While you're peacefully sipping coffee and thinking about the prospects of how to better manage your income this year, one space pebble instantly destroys all your plans. At the moment, Hundreds of thousands of asteroids have been discovered in the solar system. The orbits of half of them are quite well studied. The rest are still flying somewhere in the unknown. But in fact, scientists suggest that we are adjacent to one to two million objects with a diameter of more than half a mile. Humanity is already fully aware of this danger. NASA has set a task to identify and systematize all near-Earth objects with a diameter of more than 0.6 miles. And they aren't sleeping on the opposite side of the globe. Since 2016 in Russia, 
A telescope has been working to detect dangerous celestial bodies. It's able to identify a deadly threat at a distance of up to 100 million miles, which means that humanity would have at least a month to figure out how to save itself. Many ways are already being developed to save us from a deadly collision. For example, you can simply blow up an asteroid, crushing it into fragments less than 100 feet wide so that they burn up in the Earth's atmosphere without harming us. Or detonate a nuclear charge near an asteroid to change its orbit and move it away from Earth. A gravitational tug, a solar sail, an electromagnetic catapult just the list of potential methods of saving humanity conjures respect for their developers. And of course, all these methods work if you detect a potential threat two or five years in advance. These dates are quite possible for asteroids of gigantic sizes. But what do you say about a small, inconspicuous piece of metal or stone with a diameter of 150? 300 or a thousand feet. Perhaps we would find out about its approach a week or even a few days before the collision, and the maximum that could be done would be to evacuate people from dangerous areas and put emergency services on alert. Perhaps such small cosmic bodies seem less dangerous to you, but there's more to it. In 1908, the explosion of the Tunguska meteorite, with a diameter of about 230 feet, knocked down taiga trees across an area of 800 square miles, and it was six times lighter than the asteroid Apophis. At the same time, the Tunguska meteorite didn't leave a crater, which means that it didn't even crash into the Earth's surface, but exploded at an altitude of six to seven miles. Nevertheless, the power of that explosion is estimated to be more than 20 megatons in TNT equivalent, which is comparable to the most powerful modern thermonuclear bombs. At that time, we were lucky that this cataclysm occurred far from populated areas. But you don't need to be a scientist to know there are fewer and fewer uninhabited places on Earth, and the population density of the planet is constantly increasing. And next time, you and I will have a hard time counting on such luck. However, humanity may be interested in such massive objects and Oddly enough, the closer they are, the better. The fact is that now scientists are actively developing a theory of the industrial development of asteroids. Various minerals found in their rocks can serve as a source of iron, nickel, and titanium. In the process of further exploration of the space of the solar system, Humanity will simply need to learn how to use space resources. On some asteroids, it's possible to obtain water and oxygen to support life on space bases, or to produce hydrogen, which is fuel for engines. Reserves of platinum and cobalt will also make asteroids attractive for human exploration. In 1997, only one small asteroid, one mile in diameter, contained various metals worth $20 trillion. And the largest known metal asteroid, Psyche, contains reserves of iron-nickel ore, which are 100,000 times greater than the reserves in the Earth's crust. Industrial development of one such asteroid could provide for the needs of humanity for millions of years to come. In fact, all the gold, cobalt, iron, manganese, molybdenum, nickel, platinum, iridium, and many other heavy elements that we mine in the Earth's crust are traces of asteroids that fell to the Earth about four billion years ago, when during a heavy meteor bombardment, a huge amount of asteroid material fell on the planet. So if you think about it, we should be at least a little grateful to our space neighbors, even if they're sometimes not very friendly. But what if a cosmic body crashes into the moon? Unlike our planet, 
it doesn't have a protective atmospheric layer and is much more vulnerable to being hit. I recently considered a hypothetical situation. What if a tiny golf ball hit it at close to the speed of light? If you haven't seen it, click the video on the screen and share your opinion in the comments.